As your treasurer, we've invested in Massachusetts and we've invested in people. That's why we started the Office of Economic Empowerment, the first of its kind in the country. We created college savings plans for kids and financial literacy programs for them and their families at no cost to the taxpayer, protected seniors from frauds and scams, and workshops to give women the financial skills they need and the equal pay they deserve. Deb Goldberg, treasurer. She invests in us. Washington is so divided these days that it's easy to forget how much we have in common, like our need for quality, affordable health care. I'm proud that on the Executive Council, we work together to expand coverage to 53,000 Granite Staters. We need more of that in Washington. In Congress, I'll fight attempts to raise premiums or deny coverage to people with pre-existing conditions, and I'll work to lower the cost of prescription drugs. I'm Chris Pappas, and I approve this message because nothing is more important than delivering results for New Hampshire. The goal is simple, get better every day. Sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. I'm angry and appalled at what's happening in Washington. Every day, Donald Trump and the Republican Party are taking us backwards. We need public leaders who will fight back. Charlie Baker wants to replace Elizabeth Warren with the guy who led Donald Trump's campaign in Massachusetts. We need to be bold, to stand up, demand more. We deserve better. We deserve better. We deserve better. I'm Jay Gonzalez, a Democrat running for governor to fight for you. My dad was an iron worker. My mom cleaned homes. In high school, I waited tables to help out. This Congress is so out of touch. Families struggle to pay for health care. The politicians don't seem to know or care. They would make health care even more expensive for seniors and people with pre-existing conditions. I'm Lori Trahan, and I approve this message. I'll always stand up for working people and to make health care more affordable. Lori Trahan, for us. This is a 7 News special celebrating the Sox. They beat L.A. The Red Sox win the World Series. The damage done. How about Steve Pierce? The historic season over. The Red Sox are World Series champions. Again, Boston, we're doing it one more time. We're celebrating the Sox. Yes, we are, and a live look from above. Beautiful Fenway Park, and a million people are expected to head to the Boston area this morning. They're here to cheer on the World Series champions. All right, now we'll go out to Fenway Park there on the field. The Red Sox are about to start the show. We'll hear from players and Red Sox staff, and of course, see that World Series trophy. Actually, I see at least three right there in the <laughs> shot. One of the real perks of the job is to be here covering this uh, moment with you, and to be here with you. Good morning, everybody. It's going to be another fun day across the city of Boston. This doesn't get old, and we have become professionals at celebrating these victories. And it's a familiar route. Check it out. It all starts on home turf, friendly Fenway Park. Those duck boats will make their way through the fens, go up Wilson, around the Common, down Tremont Street, and past City Hall Plaza. The parade ends at Stanford Street. Players, well, they've been arriving at Fenway Park. Here's uh, David Price, I believe, when he first who got out of his vehicle as soon as the crowd got a look uh, they went crazy hopefully uh, his redemption tour is really beginning this morning try to see what kind of vehicle that is yeah. pretty sweet hey here's uh, Brock Hold getting out getting ready to go he's brought his young son Griffin who will no doubt see out on those duck boats there's a nice thumbs up peace sign yeah peace be with everybody today because the players in a few minutes will be speaking out at Fenway will be carrying that for you also here in the seven newsroom two people who have been there for all the championships since 2002, our sports director Joe Emersino and his special guest for this celebration. So we'll be talking to Joe in just a moment. Good morning, Joe. Wild. Oh, Focus. we have the mayor. Let's listen to the mayor. Sorry, you've been upstaged. <laughs> mayor Marty Walsh giving a hug. 
uh, getting up close to those trophies. They don't even fit in the television screen. And uh, Joe, maybe you can, uh, no, you want to add anything here? You recognize that guy? Uh, who's speaking right now? Yeah, yes. that's Tom Karen from Nesson. <laughs> he is going to do handle the Nesson broadcast today. They're handling the festivities over there at Fenway Park. They've got all three trophies there. Uh, I'm sure there's a fourth one there somewhere, and he's just starting off the ceremonies where they're going to have the live interviews inside Fenway Park. All right, so uh, we're going to actually listen to this for just a moment, so let's pause and watch. There's Governor Charlie Baker, and he's got a microphone, damage done sweatshirt. Let's uh, pause and just take you into the moment right now inside Fenway Park. Governor Baker. It's great. Never gets old. It never gets old, does it? These duck boats rolling through. I was thinking in a lot of cities, a lot of states, you wake up with helicopters overhead, and you're worried something bad's going on here. It means the duck boats are rolling through town. Absolutely, and by the way, how many, how many of you have only lived in the 2000s for the Red Sox. I got to tell you, for all of those with gray hair, you are living in the golden years, folks. They have no idea what we None. went through. Right. Sunday night, Chris Sale strikes out Manny Machado, of all people. To end the that World That was Series. sweet! Sweet! What was your reaction? Well, we don't sit in our house. We stand and we pace. And when I saw Machado come up and I saw the look on Chris Sale's face, my reaction was I cannot think of a better guy to go down for out number three. It was awesome. I think Dave O'Brien just got replaced as play-by-play -play voice of the Boston Red Sox. Uh, so was there a bet? Do you guys do that? I mean, did you have anything with California? So we reached out to the governor of California and said we'd be perfectly happy to make a wager on who was going to win the World Series. And they never got back to us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really, I think they, well, who knows, but the bottom line was we were ready to put it on the line for this team because this is a great team. And we didn't hear much from, uh, from our colleague on the West Coast, so there you have it. Maybe he knew Maybe what was going to happen. Maybe they yeah. knew that something. Listen, your you. first Red Sox duck boat parade as governor, how much are you looking forward to all of this today? Well, I'm just really glad that we got... A perfect day for this, not a cloud in the sky. I think that's perfect. I hope you all have a great day, and I hope everybody stays safe and really enjoys it. Take John. care. Thank you, Governor. I give a mic to John and to Tom. Governor Baker, everybody. Way to go, Gov. All right. You might notice here there's a little something uh, missing. Way to go. All right. Thank you for being here. We got three. I think it's time to uh, complete the table here. Please welcome Red Sox owners John Henry, Tom Warner, Linda Pizzuti Henry, and President and CEO Sam Kennedy. Hold it up high, Tom. Hold it up high first. There it is. Let's go! Let's go! Congratulations, everybody. Welcome home. John, you once said this never gets old. Fenway Park never gets old. These never get old. How much have you enjoyed this? You know, all throughout the year, uh, Alice Cora said this was a special group. Well, they were backed all year by a very special okay. fan base. Thank you. Tom, I don't know if you can choose. I don't know if you're supposed to choose, but what made this year special in your eyes? Well, as everybody knows, this is the uh, most amount of victories the Red Sox have won since 1946. 108 regular season victories. In the competition in postseason, we rolled through the Yankees, we rolled through the Astros, we rolled through the Dodgers, and I would just say it was a combination of great hard work and great teamwork. And um, as everybody knows who watched it, everybody played a role from uh, from Price and Sale to uh, Moreland and and uh, Pierce, and uh, we had two MVP candidates, but everybody was, as everybody knows here, 
just a great contributor, and so we, we are so grateful to them, and we are so grateful to you. Thank you. Sam, you grew up right down the road. Young Sam Kennedy probably would have uh, given up a lot to come to one of these, but we didn't have these when we were kids. No, we now didn't. Now you've had four as a member of the organization, first as president and CEO. What does this day, this trophy, mean to you? Well, we, uh, on behalf of our entire front office, we have to salute the best fans in all of baseball, you guys. And we have to salute our ownership group because in 04, these guys came in, we reversed the curse. In 07, we showed that it wasn't a fluke. In 13, you guys, this entire city came together in a way that no one thought was ever possible. And in 2018, this team made history. So a huge, huge thanks to all of the men and women of the Red Sox front office who work behind the scenes so hard, selflessly, with humility and teamwork, which is why we won the 2018 World Series. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, DC. Ladies and gentlemen, please get out the ownership group for championship Thank trophies you. in this century, the most Thank of any you. team in Major League Baseball. Congratulations. Nice show. Way to go. Congrats. Congrats. All right, we're getting closer to uh, the duck boats rolling Congrats. into the streets of Boston, but we're not there yet. Our ceremony continues now as we welcome the architect of the 2018 World Champion Red Sox, President of Baseball Operations, Dave Dombrowski. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Congrats. All right. Woo! Hey. Congratulations, Dave. Thank you. Uh, talk a little about this team coming together. I know going into the season, you felt it was special. Mid-season, you added some things. At what point did it go from this is a good team to, wow, we could really do something special here? Well, I think in the beginning of the year, you knew that you had a good club. And when we went to spring training, it's unusual to play as well as we did at that time. But then all of a sudden, when you start seeing that you could throw out a starting rotation with Chris Sale, with David Price, when we had Eduardo Rodriguez, Rick Porcello, and then we brought in Nathan Avaldi at that time. And then when you also saw at the midseason how players like Steve Pierce, who happened to be the World Series MVP, and Ian Kinsler, that all of a sudden you could see that the little maybe denser openings that we had, a little bit susceptible to left-hand pitching, wondering how the bullpen would fit together, all of it started to fall into place. You took some heat around the trade deadline. A lot of national people said they needed to add a bullpen arm, and they didn't. I know you said at the time, we have the arms to get the job done. How gratifying was it to see that next man up mentality, that this whole staff came together to get it done? Well, great. I mean, that's, they're a very talented group, and that's why we would sit down and talk and say, okay, where do you trade for a Ryan Brazier at this point, the guy who throws in the upper 90s, even though people don't know him? Joe Kelly maybe was going through a little bit of a struggling point at that time, but we knew he was a good pitcher and he ended up straightening out. So it was just great to see how they all came together. And let's face over the postseason, they pitched better than any other bullpen in Major League Baseball. So they did a great job for us. Which is what everybody predicted. Yes, everybody sure playoffs. did. Uh, Steve Pierce, you mentioned him, and, and I know you went out and you said at the time, this is a guy who's going to help us against lefties, but I remember you specifically saying, he can hit righties too, don't sleep on Steve Pierce. And again, as an executive who sees this guy and believes he can help you to have him named World Series MVP, what's it mean? Well, it's just, I'm thrilled for him, really, is what it comes down to, and then the club, and then the fans, because when somebody like that performs, that's good for everybody. But Steve Pierce is a true professional. He's a good major league player. He's been there for a long time. He's a championship type player, not afraid to get big hits as we see. And you also have to tip yourself your hat to the scouts that recommended him. So everybody feels great when somebody like him does that job. 
All right, I got to ask you, players like Xander Bogarts, uh, David Price, uh, as rookies got to play in the World Series, and, and I've asked them and they've said, you feel like it's going to happen all the time. 21 years ago, you won a world championship with the Marlins. It's been a little while. Do you get too to, long, too do you long. Get to appreciate it that much more because you've been through so much in this game? For sure, because what happens is, is when you win it, you think it's going to happen more often. And I've been in the World Series a couple times and lost those times. So the ultimate feeling is winning it all. And it isn't winning three games in the World Series or one or two. It's when you win it. And the feeling is really it's the best feeling you can possibly have from a professional perspective that you can imagine. I'll ask you finally, you've been in a lot of baseball markets. Tell me a little about what the fans have meant to you and this team. This is the best fans in baseball. That's the way it is. You can see it. They're, when you go around the game, the passion that is here speaks for itself and uh, we appreciate everything that you do for us we appreciate what you've done for us dave putting together a championship team dave dombrowski thank you thank you president you of baseball operations one of the uh, great moves dave dombrowski and the boston red sox made came well, just about a year ago, right after the World Series last year, when they tapped a man who had never managed a professional team. Please welcome the first-year manager, the manager of the world champions, Alex Cora. How are you? How have you been? Good. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for everything. Thank you for the support. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been a historic season and you guys made it special. I mean, congratulations to you too. Enjoy it. You have been on a duck boat here before. 2007, you won a championship here as a player. You came in at one point with this team, obviously, thinking it could win a championship here as manager. Have you had a chance to tell the players what it would be like coming back to Boston with this trophy and this championship? No, not really. I, I just hope they they understand how important this is for, for our fan base. Like I've been saying since day one, this is, this is crazy. This is madness, you know? And uh, you guys live this 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, your ep expectations are way up there. But one thing for sure, the same expectations you guys have, that group down there has it too, and that's what they're the world champs. Sometimes you got to hit the valley before the peak. You lose in seven hours and 20 minutes in game three. We've all heard now about the team meeting. Give us a quick glimpse into that room. What you said, what they said, what it was like at that moment when you had come off what could have been a crushing loss. Um, it was a crushing loss for the people outside the clubhouse. Um, one thing I've been telling them for a while now is how proud I am of them. And that day from pitch one all the way to the last pitch, we, we fought and fought and fought. And at the end, we just, whatever, we didn't win the game. So, <laughs> so in that room, I, I was telling them how proud I was. And we made a point of letting Nate know how important he was for us. I don't know, I might be making this up, but I think I told them, I said, when we win the whole thing, when people look back to game three, they're not gonna remember who lost that game. They're gonna remember Nate Yovaldi in one of the greatest performance in World Series history. And with two outs in the seventh inning, the next night, you're probably wondering, maybe I should have said something else, because you're down four nothing, but Mitch Moreland, pinch hits, Woo. you've been pulling all the right Woo. moves. No. The three-run home run, Steve Pierce ties it up. You go nine runs yeah. from that point on. And this is how Boston works, because in the sixth inning, they wanted to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I heard that Twitter went from Alex up there to Alex down there. 
But that's who they are, and I kept telling them, hey, thank you. You guys picked me up tonight. You guys picked me up tonight. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And now here we are. We're going to have a great day today. That's awesome. What was that dugout like? Chris Sale strikes out Manny Machado. You've just won the World Series. Can you remember that moment? Is it a blur? What were those next few minutes like? Uh, I remember. I do remember. Um, so I went to the umpire to, to tell him that Chris was coming in and Jackie was going to play defense. And then I look to right field and I see Chris coming in and the rest of the bullpen giving him a standing ovation. And, and you don't see that often. And, and just looking over there, I'm like, hey, man, we, we did it right. You know, they, they do believe in each other. They do care about each other. And then slider to Turner, swing and a miss, blocked by Christian, one out. 3-2 uh, slider to Kike. He didn't recognize it, it seems like. He tried to foul it off. Strike two. And then the guy we've been waiting the whole season. And I turn around to Ron Rennick. I say, we've been waiting for this guy the whole season. Fastball, 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 slider. And now we're the world champs. Amazing, amazing. Couple last ones, Alex, then we'll let you get on your boat. You talked about that buy-in, the way this whole team, I mean, you got a guy like Brock Holt, it's the first cycle in Major League playoff history. He's not in the lineup next day, Tough but league. he buys into it. Tough league, you know, you hit for the cycle, you, you don't play the next day, that's how it works. So what was that like to have the players who said, I believe in this system and I'm willing to put my own desires in the background for the team? Well, and you guys, I don't, I don't like talking about myself, but um, what this organization did last year, giving me a chance to manage at the big league level, knowing where I'm coming from, knowing that I had no experience, knowing that I'm 42 and still learning, they gave me a shot. They trusted me. Uh, since the first meeting in Fort Myers with Jackie, Chris, David, and Sandy, I kept telling them, Let's move on. You know, it starts here. This is what I want. This is what we're going to do. And this is what's going to happen. And to see it on a daily basis, just get the information, use it to your advantage, play hard, and win games. And if not, we just turn the page. It was awesome. In October, Brock hits for the cycle. He doesn't play the next day. Um, who else? There, there was a lot of those that they didn't care. Um, I try to make a point every, you know, when during the season, I will tell you if you were going to start probably the night before or two days before. In October, we did it for the first few days, but then after that, it really didn't matter. I didn't have to text them. I didn't have to call them because they didn't care. They just wanted to show up, help everybody out, and win ball games. And think about it. The New York Yankees, yeah, the sky was falling. You know, we lost game two. And he was panicking here. Everybody was like, whoa, it's over. We scored 16 at Yankee Stadium. Suck on it. And then, for how much I care about those guys in Houston, well, we went to Houston and we swept them down there. And to finish it off, we go to this historic ballpark that holds 55,000 people. I played there for six years, and I know how special Dodger Stadium is. And when Steve Pierce hit that home run in game five, it felt like we had 40,000 fans cheering for us at Dodger Stadium. It was an amazing run. It was an amazing year. And you guys make it that special. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Well done. See you on the boat. Thank you. Yeah. The manager of the Red Sox, Alex Cora. How do you follow that up? How about with the World Series MVP, Steve Pierce? How are you doing? Thank you. Is it still surreal to hear you introduced as World Series MVP, Steve Pierce? Yeah, it sure is. This is this is incredible. What was that like? 
the, not being named, I'm sure that was incredible, but the days leading up to it, those last couple of games, after that 18-inning loss, you guys are down 4 nothing in the seventh. Chris Sale is screaming at anyone who'll listen in the dugout that you got to get going. Marlon hits one, you hit one. All of a sudden, it was almost like you just felt that momentum swing. What was it like to be in the middle of that? Oh, it was incredible. Uh, yeah, when Chris, Chris was going off on everybody, and it was... And uh, we, we knew we had, we had to get it going. You know, our, our offense was kind of went silent there for about 20 innings, but uh, we figured it out, and, uh, you know, and, and everything started happening well for us. You know, Mitch with the big homer, tied the game, you know, Brock double. Like, we, we just, everybody, everybody responded, and, and uh, yeah, that's just how we played all year. You know, we found ways to get it done. When our back was against the wall, we, uh, we band together and we got it done. Alex pulled everybody in after that 18-inning loss. He doesn't like to have meetings, but he felt you guys needed to know how well you played in that game, how historic that was. What did that meeting need to you as far as being able to get back up the next day and get after it? It's what we needed. It was what we needed. You know, he, he, we shut the doors. We, we, had a, we had a good team meeting, and uh, we came out the next day and we responded. I mean, that, that's what it's all about. I always say... I was born in New England. These people were born into this. You were born into this. You were That's born right. a Red That's Sox right. fan. That's right, yeah. Yeah, didn't really have a chance when I was, when I was younger. You know, this, you know, my dad's from up here, and, and uh, you know, Patriots, Red Sox, that's all I ever knew. So to be part of this, to, to think that in about 20 minutes you're going to be standing on a duck boat driving through the city of Boston in a championship parade. If you could go back and tell 12-year-old Stevie Pierce, someday you'll be on a championship parade with the Red Sox, what would that kid have said? He would have believed it. <laughs> he, would, he would have believed it. This, this is a dream come true for me, and, and, and I, am, I am so thankful to be here right now. You've been on a lot of teams, mm -hmm. a long journey to get to this point, to get this opportunity. You spent a half season here with these fans. You know how they feel about this team. What has that meant to you here over the last few months? Uh, these are the best fans in sports right here. And it, it's meant the world to me. They, they accepted me when I got here. The team did also. I mean, this is... This has been one of the funnest teams I've ever played for, and, and I really hope to come back next year. We hope to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Series most valuable player, Steve Pierce. See you out there. Well done. One hundred and nineteen wins, a hundred and eight during the regular season, set a new franchise record, eleven more in the postseason to bring the championship home. And you can keep that chant going in a couple of moments because our next guest was the MVP of the American League Championship Series, Jackie Bradley Jr. Hey, hey, hey. How you been? Good, good. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Take me through these last few weeks, what this playoff run has been like. Uh, you've been to the playoffs before. Uh, Mookie said at one point, a monkey off our back, getting past that first round. The way that went, go down to New York winning those. You're the MVP against Houston. You come from behind and win those games against the Dodgers. Uh, it's an unbelievable script, isn't it? Yeah, you can't write a better script. What an amazing story, an amazing ride it's been. Um, you know, during the playoffs, it didn't even feel like it was the playoffs. It, was, it felt like a continuation of the year. Um, you know, we continue to, you know, take each game one at a time. And after we were win, we would just try to focus on the next. And, you know, it, it was just an amazing ride. You guys have bonded together in the outfield so well. How special is it to be part of what even Fred Lynn called the best outfield in baseball? <laughs> uh, great, great group of guys. Um, I'm honored to even you know, be playing with them. Um, you know, we're, we're really close. Um, so much that you know, we, we talk to each other about anything. Um, it also means that we're going to on, get on each other about everything. So uh, we like to give each other a hard, hard time. I think that just kind of speaks to how close we are as a team. Nine two-out RBI in that series against the Astros. 
I asked David Ortiz this, and I'll ask you this. How do you keep yourself in the moment? How do you not let that, you know, it's two outs, game on the line, guys on base. How do you make sure that you don't let the game speed up on yourself? Just focus on your preparation. Um, do what you, you've done all year and you know, try to lock it in. And you did, no doubt about that. We've talked so much about the team first mentality here. I mentioned before Brock Holt, right? You hit the cycle, not in the lineup the next day. You go out to the National League Park, someone's got to come out. J.D. Martinez in, you come in off the bench in those games. What does it say about this team that all of you guys bought into that and would do whatever it takes? We have a very deep team. As you can see, we had a lot of guys contribute um, throughout this postseason. It wasn't just one guy, two guys who did it. Everyone had their moment. And... You know, that's what it's going to take to win it all, and, of course, we win it all. You guys used to dance after every win out in the outfield, and when you stopped, I remember you said at one point in spring training, we'll dance after we win. Right. It all. You've won it all. Is it time to dance? <laughs> Is that what we said? That's what we're saying. Is it time to dance? I don't know. Is it? i got to get my crew up here if it is. <laughs> here before it's all said and done. <laughs> Jackie, enjoy it. What's it going to be like to be out here in the city of Boston on a duck boat celebrating a championship? I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Everybody's out supporting. Um, we're loving it. Families are out. Um, we can't wait to see everybody. Jackie Bradley Jr. has got the MVP. Can we get him a gold glove now like he deserves? Thank you. Congrats, buddy. Thanks, uh, Jackie Bradley Jr., everybody. We talked about winning it all and how it took everybody to get to that ultimate goal. One man took the only loss in the World Series and yet might have turned in the most incredible performance we've seen, not only this postseason, but one of the best pitching performances in postseason history. Ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Evaldi. Good. Who's this? Jace. Jace, how are you, buddy? Good. Want well, to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> what have these last few days been like uh, since you guys won it and came back across the country? Is it a dream come true? What's it been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a dream come true. Uh, I mean, this is everything we worked for from the moment spring training on, and for this to finally come true, it's it's been a whirlwind for sure. All right, take us back to... Uh, well, Saturday morning, uh, when you come in out of the bullpen, in your mind, how many innings do you think you're going to go? I think I'm only going to go one or two. <laughs> I mean, that's it. And didn't work out that way. Didn't work out that way. 97 but. pitches later. Was there any point? What was your mentality inning after inning? Alex said you just kept saying, no, I'm good. I got another one. What was your mentality? I just kept thinking, you know, I got two more innings. Two more innings. And, you know, once we take the lead, I wanted to, you know, be able to finish it off and get that win. You can talk to Chase real quick. I'll let you go. He wants to talk on the mic. Ah, uh, you want to say hello again? How about? Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello. How about go socks? Go socks. Win the crowd over with that. The team rallied around you after the game. Yeah. Obviously, that could have been a crushing loss. Alex brought you all in. Take us into that moment. What was it like after a tough defeat like that? Yeah, I mean the first game uh, at home against the Do or on the road against the Dodgers, you always want to get that first one out of the way. Losing in extras, you know, for me it was tough. I, uh, I don't know. I felt like the tides could turn, but with my performance, everybody was so positive. They, you know, really rallied rallied against or with me. And the uh, AC was just saying, you know, it was just an amazing performance, and everybody gave me a little standing ovation in the clubhouse and. You know, I knew going in the next two games, it was that was going to be it. Did you really tell Alex the next day you were good to go if he needed you? Yeah, I mean, just it's like that night. You know, you, you can't predict baseball. So I ended up throwing six innings instead of one or two, and I wanted to make myself available the next day. How's your arm feel? It feels great now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know, Jason, you want to say one more thing. You want to say something else? Yeah. Go get some! There you go. Enjoy the parade today. Congratulations. It was incredible to watch. Thank you. Nathan Ivaldi and Jace.
I think he stole the show. Wow. The Evaldis. How about that, though? 97 pitches. That's a World Series record. 97 pitches in relief coming in. And without that, you don't know where the bullpen's going to be for those remaining games four and five. But the bullpen was set up and ready to go, and they didn't lose another game. As you construct a championship team, sometimes you need to add key parts. This year's team wanted a little more pop in the lineup. And they got it from this guy, J.D. Martinez. What's up, man? Right. What has uh, these last few days been like? A blur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, it's crazy. Uh, it's definitely a dream come true. It's one of these things where you feel like you're dreaming. You don't want to wake up. Um, it's one of those things where you're like, just, just don't pinch me. Let me keep sleeping. You know, when you sat this offseason waiting to see where you're going to end up, it dragged on a little longer than you want, a little longer than people thought. But I remember that look on your face from your parents at Fort Myers when you finally came in and said, this was going to be my home. When did you have a feeling that this was going to be a special team, that you were coming into something special? Um, I think, you know, uh, after that first month of the season, uh, just playing alongside the guys and really getting to be, you know, a teammate and really get to, you know, go to battle with them every night, you kind of just saw it. You saw the special. You saw how everybody was just coming together, um, how they bounced back from from games. When we, if we lose a couple games, how everybody just kind of had that mentality of tomorrow's another day type deal, and it was just special. The whole the whole that whole first month is when I kind of just hit me. I don't know if you remember, but in Fort Myers, you and I did a, a conference call with season ticket holders, and I think it was the first question: Hey, you gonna beat the Yankees? No, it didn't take long for you to realize how important. What was it like to start this whole playoff run with that incredible win against the Yankees? Uh, it was awesome. You know, the fans ate it up. They loved it. Uh, it was definitely, you know, a rivalry that uh, you can feel the energy from the first game here. And you carried on into the playoffs, and it was obviously special. You got it started with that three-run home run, game one of the postseason. How good was it to make an impact right away? <laughs> uh, it was huge. You know, obviously, just to come in and contribute right away and give us that lead right away and kind of just settle down everybody, kind of give everybody that, relieve that pressure. Uh, it was big. When you watch this come together, and we've been talking with all the guys about the team first mentality, you've had guys, you know, uh, Jackie Bradley Jr., MVP of the ALCS, not in the lineup because you're in the lineup. Uh, Brock Holtz, not in the lineup a day after hitting a cycle, whatever it is. How impressed have you been by this team, the depth and their willingness to do whatever it takes? It's, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, you're just looking at this postseason. There was no one person that did it. It was 25 guys. It was everybody. Um, it was huge. And you don't see that often. You've played here at Fenway Park as a visitor. You've spent the season now here as a, a player for the Red Sox. What have these fans been like for you? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Way far, way more than I ever expected. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. What about the ballpark itself, J.D.? I mean, a lot of experts said, well, the dimensions, they're not going to be great for J.D., won't be as many homers, won't be. You know, did this ballpark play to your strengths? Did you did you feed off any of this? Uh, I definitely feed off the energy in the crowd. Um, you know, it's definitely a fun place to play. Anytime you get to come home and you're tired from a road trip and you come in here on a Tuesday day game and this place is packed and everybody's super excited and the energy, it kind of wakes you up, it gets you back into the game and you're like, dude, you, you you're playing in front of your home fans. Everyone's here to see you. You gotta, you, you gotta get pumped up a little bit. So it's uh, it's cool. It's cool. All right, I'll ask you finally. You talked about the ballpark. You talked about the fans. Real quickly about your teammates. How cool is today going to be for you to share this ride on duck boats with all the guys you battled with all year? It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. You know, there's so much hard work, so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that nobody sees. So much sweat. You know, so much stuff that that you just, you can't account for. You can, nobody ever, nobody can ever, you know, document it. And just to be out here with these guys, and it's, it's gonna be awesome. And it's gonna be awesome, ladies and gentlemen, J.D. Martinez. Thank you guys, thank you. Take it with you. Take it with All right, we're gonna keep bringing uh, players up here. We're probably about 20 minutes away from the duck boats rolling out into the streets. And a man who has become a fan favorite, and has delivered at the plate. Please welcome Brock Holt. A 
I should say the Holt. Yeah, this guy's more famous than I am, so. How you doing? Fantastic. How can you not be? I would hope so. Yeah. What have the last couple days been like for you? Whirlwind. I mean, you know, we set out to do this in spring training. Um, we knew we had a chance. We knew our team was good, but I don't think we knew that we were this good. Um, th this has been a special year, special group of guys, and, you know, we're very fortunate to, to play for the Boston Red Sox, and I think every guy would say that. And to, to bring one of these home and to be a part of it, it's pretty special. You said, you said at some point along the way that, you know, you dream of playing every day as a kid, right? And, and, and you're a guy who wants to play and has the ability to play every day. And it, because of the depth of this team, because of the options they have, you don't always get to play every day. But you said, to be part of this, to be part of this team, I'm willing to sacrifice some of maybe what I would want individually. You weren't the only guy doing that. Tell us a little about what that team first mentality is like. Yeah, I mean that's kind of what it takes. I mean, it's it's this is a this is a hard game, and to to win one of these is is the hardest thing to do, and um, it takes 25 guys and some, and we were able to uh, we were able to do that. Every guy bought into what we were doing, and um, we all believed in each other. We all pulled for each other, and uh, that's why we have this trophy, and we were able to bring it home. So um, it's just this group doesn't matter who was playing when you were playing. We were just all happy to be a part of it, and I mean, now we get to celebrate. Three years ago, you were the lone all-star on this team. Then the injuries came in, the, the concussions, the vertigo. There was a point where I'm not sure if you knew you'd be able to play the game at the level you thought you would. To go through that and to be here today, uh, have you had a chance to put that in perspective at all yet? Uh, not really. I mean. You know, I don't think this is all sunk in yet. I think once I get on that duck boat and see everybody, see everybody in the city um, cheering for us, I think, you know, I think that's that's when I'll I'll realize we actually did win the World Series. Um, but I think, yeah, what what I went through the last couple of years makes this more special. I mean, obviously, it's going to be special regardless of you know of what you go through. That's part of my story now, and 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 now being a world champion is too. You were here in 2013, but you didn't get to play in the playoffs. Obviously, you knew what it takes for a team to come together and win it all. When did you first see that in this team? Yeah, I mean, I was up and down in 13. I watched the I watched the playoffs just like every one of you did on, on my couch at home. Um, but I have a World Series ring from it. Uh, uh, but no, I, I, this this team was special from the beginning. This team was special from the beginning. We knew it. AC, you know, told us how good we were, and we believed it. Um, you know, obviously, I, I didn't get to go through the the playoff, the the World Series experience in '13, um, but I know, knew how close that team was. And just going through the year this year and realizing how close we were, it felt a lot like that. Um, and I, I just think the more we kept winning and, and beating beating people, the more we realized, like, hey, we we got a chance, and and you know, we did it. We were the last team standing. We won the last game. That's everyone's goal, and, and um, you know, we're, we're very happy we accomplished it. Rog, I'll ask you finally, almost since day one, you, you connected with the fans here in Boston. You're a blue-collar guy. You're a hard-working guy. I think fans love the effort you've given since you arrived here. We know what you mean to the fans. What do these fans mean to you? The feeling is mutual. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we love it in Boston so much. Uh, me and my wife, Griff, we, you know, we have a house here. Um, so this is kind of like a second home to us now. And um, we're so thankful to, uh, to be a part of this city, to be a part of this organization, to be a part of this team. And uh, we, we all did this together. So y'all should be just as proud. Give it up for Brock Holt, everybody. By the way, if you follow him on social media, you'll see he might have the best swing in the family. Brock might have the second 100%, best swing. Yeah. 100%. He crushes it with the wiffle ball. Brock, enjoy the day. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Brock Holt, everybody. See you. You know, we talk a lot about <clears throat> players getting redemption here in the playoffs, guys getting an opportunity. Our next guy appeared in all five World Series games through six scoreless innings in the World Series and was part of a lockdown bullpen. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Kelly. I think the fight club's getting bigger by the day here, Joe. Hello. Is this thing on? 
Uh, Joe, what was that like? I mean, you appeared in every World Series game. You've been to the World Series before on the other side with St. Louis back in 2013. But to be part of a bullpen that some people were questioning coming into the playoffs and wound up being the best bullpen in the playoffs, and you were a big part of it. What was that like? We heard it a bunch of times, you know. Um, it was one of those things that we, we kind of challenged ourselves. Um, before the playoffs even started, the pitching coach came up to us and uh, showed us all the, the headlines saying how bad our bullpen was. We're the worst bullpen in all the playoffs. Um, Thank you guys. Thank you guys for, for saying that. You know, that, that, that challenged us as a group, honestly. Um, but no, it was very, very exciting. Um, and, you know, something that we, we wanted to do and as, as best as we can and, and show up every single day ready to pitch. That uh, strikeout of Grandal, your second inning, you got a guy on third base. You guys are trying to put this thing away. Uh, where does that rank in your baseball career? Way up there. Um, I think what ranked even higher was looking at the Dodger dugout and uh, looking at Max Muncy maybe yell some bad words at me. <laughs> I mentioned the Fight Club back at the beginning. You really got a feel for what this passion is all about. You already knew, but did that whole experience, what happened with the Yankees, what was it, the Bruins game a couple days later, you get a standing ovation up in the suite. Did that give you an even better appreciation for what these fans are like? I mean, you just said it. Look at we have all these people here right now, and we're not even playing a baseball game. Uh, we have the best fans in, in all of baseball, and we were in L.A. during game five, and there was more Red Sox chants and Let's Go Dodger chants and, than and throughout the whole entire game. When you... We're last here in a World Series experience. You were with the Cardinals, and you guys lost game six. Sorry to bring that up, but you were going to be the game seven starter. So I've always thought that had to be like the ultimate, right? You're getting ready for what would be the biggest start of your life, and you don't even get that opportunity. To kind of go through that, to get traded here, and to now be on a duck boat, is there sort of a full circle here that uh, makes you appreciate it this much more? Thank you, St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> you know, like you said, we, we lost to the Red Sox in the World Series in 13. Um, then I got traded over. Um, but the Red Sox organization, we were able to, to win a World Series this year. Um, and it was one of those weird feelings where I was going to pitch Game 7. Um, but pitching every single game in the World Series is a lot cooler than, than probably pitching Game 7. I want to ask you finally, I've always felt, especially over the last couple of months and into the playoffs, there's really kind of a band of brothers feel to the bullpen out there. You guys bonded together, different guys did different roles. We, we learned what a rover was, a starting pitcher starting. Now we got to have three mounds in a bullpen just to get everybody ready in a World Series game. But take us into that mentality a little bit. Uh, how sweet is it today to be celebrating with uh, those guys who've meant so much to each and every one of you? It's amazing. Um, and honestly, like you said, we, we, are, we are so close, and, we, and every guy on that team is like my brother. Um, and it all started with us getting some Fortnite wins that led to a World Series win. Let's go. How much are you looking forward to this ride? Looking forward to it? It's, it's something that I've heard from past players. Um, you know, winning the World Series is great, and, you know, it's the best feeling they said, but going on this parade... Um, I heard from David Ortiz, from Pedro Martinez, Jason Veritek. They said this is what they look forward to after the World Series, and, and this is the next best thing. So I'm excited, and thank you guys for coming out. All right, keep an eye on the Joe Kelly boat, that's for sure. Thanks, buddy. Congratulations. Thanks. See you. Joe Kelly, everybody. All right, we're almost ready for the boats to get rolling. We had to bring out a special guest before we get going. He doesn't need an introduction. Please welcome Jerry Remy, the Rem Dog. Jerry, how are you? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing. How great. you doing? How about it? The greatest team in Red Sox history. Jerry, uh, first of all, how are you? Everybody wants to know. How are you feeling? I'm kicking cancer's ass. <laughs> 
Cancer had no chance. I never doubted it. Watching this thing come together, you were here in the booth, then you got pulled out of the booth, you're watching at home. How special has this team been to you? Well, I tell you, you could tell in spring training, you know, it was very obvious. We get to see, see the teams in spring training. You know it was going to be a good team. You hope that it stayed healthy. And the fact that this team had unity. It really had unity. They loved each other. That comes from Alex Cora. He did a fabulous job bringing this club together. They played hard all season long. They played the game the way it's supposed to be played. And this is the result, a nice new parade today. When you were a kid, we didn't have a dunk ball parade every year or two. When I was a kid, we were used to losing every year. <laughs> How now we is win this? every year. How different is this? Oh, this is great. This is, you know, you beat New York. Yeah. You beat L.A. Yeah. All the Hollywood people. Yeah. We got Hollywood people right here. Oh, we got world champions right here is what we, we got. We got world champions. That's all we need. Enjoy, folks, enjoy the day. Have a great day. Enjoy what this great team did. There it is. Jerry, give us one more. Uh, give us a, what's a, uh, you say Buenos Tardes, it's, what's a daytime? What time is it? It's, uh... Buenos Dias, amigos! There you go! We've been missing that at the start of the broadcast. Jerry Remy, ladies and gentlemen! All right, we are going to get on the boats. I got to get on a boat. The boats are going to be rolling. One last chance. How about a round of applause for our favorite sons, 04, 07, 13, and now... 2018 four World Series championships in the last 15 years. Thank you all for coming. You are the best fans, not only in baseball, but in all of sports. And we'll see you out on the duck boats. Have a great day, everyone. You've been listening to uh, the, 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 the rally there at Fenway Park. Tom Karen with New England's Nesson Network uh, leading things off, uh, interviewing some of the management, the ownership, and some players. And you can see Kim right there alongside Fenway Park. I believe that's along Lansdowne Street. The duck boats are ready to go. I think uh, about 25 duck boats are scheduled to be carrying the players, the management, the families for this rally that's about to get started from uh, Fenway Park over here to City Hall Plaza and it's a perfect day getting near 50 degrees as we look at these four World Series trophies the history of this team the energy we're feeling today let's go let's get it done four World Series trophies that uh, this team has won in 15 years the most of any team in baseball history we see now uh, after the celebration inside the park here's what everyone's waiting for as many as a million people are waiting for these duck boats to come flying down the streets of Boston. Actually, they kind of crawl, which is nice because you get a chance to see the players and their family members and the coaching staff and a lot of the people who uh, are sort of behind the scenes but get a chance to take part in this victory as well. And of course, uh, the fans uh, most loved. In fact, uh, Brock uh, Holt, one of the players, uh, second baseman who spoke inside uh, Fenway Park, said today uh, when he asked about the, was asked about what do you feel about the fans and he said the feeling is mutual and this city definitely loves their Red Sox and uh, sounds like the Red Sox love us too that there's a lot of support when uh, people are there in the stands cheering on uh, who said that I think it was JD Martinez on a Tuesday afternoon when we just pack uh, Fenway Park so here are all the duck boats you see a lot of security a lot of fans that's tight going down Lansdowne Street but uh, all for good and a really happy day in Boston you may not be seeing us for a while because these are the images that you really care about but uh, to introduce ourselves this is Adam Williams along with Kim Casey also here in the seven news from our sports director Joe Emersino and Dan Shaughnessy with the Boston Globe. Uh, we'll be talking with them. In fact, let's just uh, uh, turn the conversation over to Joe and Dan right now and talk about this season. One more time from the producer. Well, well, I'm hearing David Price, but I'm not seeing David Price. Oh, he would like to talk about David Price. And you know, that's a great idea because, boy, what a turnaround season. And the fans, he, he, I actually just wonder where his head is today. Like, is this going to be the best day and turn things around? Will he stay? How does he feel? Because he was wearing his heart on his sleeve after the, even after the win. It was hurting, you could tell. Those are all the questions, Kim. And we do have answers to many of those questions. And we'll start you know, with will he uh, stay because he has no. decided 
decided that he is not going to opt out. He could have opted out of his contract by 5 o'clock today. David Price will stay, and he's no fool, Dan Shaughnessy, because he's 33 years old. He has a $127 million left on his contract right now, $31 million next year, and then $32 million for the next three years. So David Price, there's no way he opts out because it's hard to find $127 million these days. Yeah, this is an interesting story, Joe, because uh, David Price had that option there the whole time, and with all the stuff that went on here in the first three years prior to winning the World Series with him as the hero, <laughs> there was a lot of noise, a lot of nonsense, the whole Dennis Eckersley ambush, the Fortnite stuff, and just fans, you know, cranking on him, the talk shows, just getting crushed from left to right. Um, and there was a measure of conversation, like how much does he hate it here? Would he by any chance say it's worth it to go get less money? He knew he couldn't replicate the 127 million, like you say, but would he say, you know what, I just don't like it here, I'm gonna go. Well, it turns out he does like it here. He likes his teammates, and now he likes winning. He's kind of off the hook with the fans. Fans love him now. He should have been MVP of the post of the World Series, in my view. So I think that that's off the table for him now, and it's nice that it's been announced that he has told people he's gonna stay here, and fans like him or not, I think they all like him now. You're gonna be looking at David Price for another four seasons, and he's been a little bit underappreciated. He's 39 and 19 as a Red Sox in his first three seasons here. Well, he, um, I'm not sure his relationship with the fans is all the way healed. He even threw one quick jab after the World Series oh. about Dr. Andrews said I had a special elbow. You all made fun of me for my special elbow, and now I proved I have my special elbow. There's that piece where he'll continue to poke at the fans and at the media along the way, but you're correct. His teammates like him. Yeah. He likes his teammates. He clinched the ALCS down in Houston, which was amazing for his first ever uh, postseason start and win. And then he comes back, he wins game two of the World Series with six, six innings, gives up two runs, comes back in game three and gives him two-thirds of an inning of clean relief, and then, of course, the clincher down in, out in L.A. So he's proven it, and I think in Boston and in New England, if you play well, we love you. But, but keep your mouth from doing this the whole time, you know? Sure. I mean, John Lackey's an example of a guy like that. He was a pariah, and then he won in the World Series in 13. They loved him. He still hated it here. He got out of here. Price is going to stay. And I think that, you know, it'll be interesting how it moves forward. But, Joe, when he's saying those things about my magic elbow and, and that whole thing with the Trump card and I've got the card now, he's talking to us. He's talking to, you know, Jim Murray at, at the Sports Hub. Yep. He's talking to you and me. I don't, think, I don't think he's as angry at the fans as he is at us. And he feels like he stuck it to us. He showed us. And you know what? Good luck to him because he did. He went out there and did it. And I've, I've always believed in his talent. And finally... In the playoffs this year, he was the pitcher that they bought three years ago. He brought it. Adam Kim. All right, we'll be talking with, uh, with Joe and Dan again in just moments, but we want to get out to Chelsea McDonald, who's at Fenway Park as the Rolling Rally is about to kick off. Speaking of uh, David Price, uh, Chelsea had a chance to speak with him as we get ready to celebrate. So while we're on the subject, let's get out to Chelsea with more of what David Price had to say. Chelsea. Uh, yeah, I'm opting in. I'm not going anywhere. This is, um, I want to win here. And we did that this year, and I want to do it again. How important is it to you that, obviously, it's not you coming back, but some of the other guys like Pierce and Yavaldi and, and Kimbrough, do you want to keep this group together? Absolutely. Um, yeah, you know, we want to be able to keep as many guys here as we can. You know, we had uh, a very good team this year, and, you know, we want to continue on with that same trend. You had said consistently that you always wanted to opt in, but was there any consideration otherwise, and did the postseason reaffirm that? Um, no, there, was, there wasn't any uh, reconsideration on, on my part ever. You know, I was... Um, I came here to win, you know, and we did that this year. That was very special, and now I want to do it again. All right, David Price says he's not going anywhere, holding his son Xavier, getting ready to board the duck boats. We continue to watch the boats and the players uh, get on. We're about four minutes before this parade to start rolling. So as David Price gives uh, Red Sox Nation some good news, let's take a quick break and we'll be back for the beginning of the rolling rally. Stay with the news station.
every day since 1848, we've been working hard for you, right by your side, with everything from your very first savings account to helping you make a lifelong dream come true. East Boston Savings Bank, getting it done every day since 1848. The goal is simple, get better every day. Sit back, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. When I was shopping for car insurance, the choice was easy. I switched to Geico and saved hundreds. <laughs> Excuse me. Winner. That's a win, but it's not the only reason I switched. Hi. GEICO has licensed agents who I can reach 24-7. Great savings and round-the-clock service. <laughs> now that's a win-win. Winner, winner. Yay, me. <laughs> oh, hi. Good luck. Switch to GEICO. It's a win-win. Washington is so divided these days that it's easy to forget how much we have in common, like our need for quality, affordable health care. I'm proud that on the Executive Council, we work together to expand coverage to 53,000 Granite Staters. We need more of that in Washington. In Congress, I'll fight attempts to raise premiums or deny coverage to people with pre-existing conditions, and I'll work to lower the cost of prescription drugs. I'm Chris Pappas, and I approve this message because nothing is more important than delivering results for New Hampshire. Celebrating the Sox is brought to you by Nissan. 2018 World Series champions. We are celebrating the Sox on 7 News as we continue special coverage. And we are looking along Lansdowne Street, a sea of fluorescent green, which are the police officers who are out there to get those duck boats going and keep everyone safe. About a million people are expected to line the streets between Fenway Park and Boston's Government Center, City Hall Plaza. As we continue the celebration, our team is back and we're ready to cheer them on this 2018 World Series winning Red Sox team. We have our reporters lined up and down the route. Uh, Joe Amarcino and Don Shaughne Dan Shaughnessy from the Boston Globe here in studio. Uh, these uh, duck boats were actually carrying tourists yesterday, but there were crews busy all through the night, making them look as good as new. Not like anybody cares, they're kind of focused on the players, but it's a beautiful day in Red Sox Nation, a beautiful day in Boston. 46 degrees, sun is in and out, and uh, we've had a lot of parades, and some of them, the weather hasn't been as nice, so uh, definitely a decent day. Out there at uh, Fenway Park, we have a lot of reporters, including our John Hall, who joins us right now. John, that was a nice uh, pre-celebration. No, it was really terrific. The fans uh, who were ticketed, season ticket holders, got in here and were able to see all of their uh, favorites up on the stage. And also a big favorite, certainly Alex Cora, the manager of uh, the Red Sox. We'll give you a look out in the field now. It's pretty uh, emptied out. Uh, just a few family members still milling about here. And um, many of the players have gone out through a center field garage door there to head out to the duck boats. We spoke with uh, Pedro Martinez uh, quickly. He he was pretty funny. I was reminding him of uh, the time in 2004 when a water bottle actually struck him as he was on a duck boat uh, during the parade after the World Championship in 2004. He laughed and said, this time I will catch it. Uh, talk to Brock Holt. He was very, very happy to hear that David Price will still be back on this team. That's the news coming out of parade day that uh, David Price plans to pick up his option and stay with the Red Sox. And why wouldn't he? He's going to make 30 one million dollars next year. We also spoke with, with so many other players. Christian Vasquez, J.D. Martinez. We spoke to the owner, John Henry. Big Poppy was out here. Certainly an awful lot of fun and people remembering parades gone by and the parades that continue. We're lucky, lucky people in Boston with 11 world championships this century. Reporting live in Fenway Park, I'm Jonathan Hall, 7 News. John, thanks so much. Uh, also lucky.